Hello there. Welcome to Living in the Light. Today we're talking about Happy New Year. What is that all about? I'm a little disappointed to say that uh, Tishy is not out here with me. I think she's mad at me. She was coming out and pacing around as I was getting ready and I had to put her down because I had to go get something and came back and she would not get back up on my lap. So we may see her before the end of the video and we may not, but uh, it is what it is. Okay. Well, today, uh, the topic says, Happy New Year. Ew, I'm off center. I don't know how to get on center. There we go. Now I'm better. Okay, Happy New Year. Why would I say Happy New Year? It's not even December yet. Well, the reason is, uh, last night was the first, yesterday was the first Sunday of Advent. And Advent is the beginning of the church year. So it like starts with Advent and then it, you know, goes through the calendar year until the following first Sunday of Advent. Last night also was the first night of Hanukkah. Now I want to just tell you a little bit. I want to connect this with New Year. First of all, um, if we talk about the pre-religious era, we were going into darkness that, uh, you know, the days are getting shorter and the nights are getting longer and, oh, God, it can be so depressing. It's like uh, 5 o'clock here and it is dark, dark outside. And in just a few months, it's going to be light until 8.30 and sometimes even 9 o'clock. Makes you crazy. But um, a part of this pre-religion days, um, people would like be celebrating. They would first of all be like mourning the loss of the light. The light is gone, so it's colder and it's darker. And then the light is coming back. Well, the light's not going to start coming back until December 21st, which is the uh, 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 winter... Um, <laughs> Equinox, solstice, oh my God, I got them both mixed up. Solstice probably because, yeah, winter solstice because it's uh, everything is rotating around to the point where the days are going to get a little lighter, a little lighter, a little, a little warmer. So we will be happy with that. So that's one way that it's doing. The Hanukkah is called the Festival of Lights because it's about the coming of the light. And in Christianity, in Advent, we are celebrating the, or, or observing, watching for the light of Christ, uh, for the birth of Jesus, the star, you know, and the sky, and all that. So it really is like the beginning of a new year. So if you've got stuff you want to leave behind you, this is the time to do it. I posted the video on the advent um, on the advent wreath, so uh, you know what that is is basically about. If you watch that, if not, go back and watch it, and you'll learn about the advent wreath. Also, um, with Hanukkah, I really wanted to to share that. Now, first of all, the um, I'm going to give you a, a brief overview of the story of Hanukkah, and I printed it out so I didn't make any any mistakes and um so basically many 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 years ago there was a king named um antiochus epiphanes epiphanes and he was not a good guy and he wanted to like of course be god over everything and he wanted all the people to practice his religion and he wanted all of the people to practice his culture and his traditions and to take away what they had. Well, there were a large number of people in his kingdom uh, who were Jewish and they had their own culture, their own practices, their own religion and beliefs and he banned it. There's no more of that. You'll do what I do. Now, a lot of people were really afraid, especially if you want to talk about cruel practices in those days, 
They were abundant for sure. And, but there was a small group of people that would not go along. And that was, the group of people is called the Maccabees. And even though their army was very small, <clears throat> they were very committed. They were dedicated to God and to a higher power and to their own freedom to be able to worship as they chose. And so they went to battle uh, against the, the king and, um, and they won. And so when they went to go back and take over their temple, uh, they won their religious freedom. So they went back to take over the temple and they had trashed it. And they would uh, sacrifice uh, uh, unclean animals on the altars, and they built their own altars. And so they had to clean everything out and purify it. And after it was purified, it needed to be, um, there's a light you put in, and that light um, had to last for eight days till they could get more oil. But they only had enough oil for one night yet the light burn <clears throat> the candle the oil lamp did not go out for eight days and eight nights so what that was reminding the people of is no matter how hopeless it looks that God is in charge and that God is powerful and miracles can happen and I think that's really something that's very important for us to remember in those times, whether it's in our individual life, our spiritual life, our political experience, that we stay aligned with a higher power. It doesn't matter. God doesn't care what you call it. You know what? It, to one person, you may be dad or mom or uncle or, or sister or brother or teacher or uh, whatever you are, you have, you're, we're all known by many names. So the same way with the higher power. But we affirm and, and we stick to that higher power for all that is good. Now I wanted to read this last paragraph to you because to me it's very pertinent to today. Um, With every Hanukkah candle we light, we illumine the most important message of all, that we must always work to find light in the darkness, and we must always work to keep the light of religious freedom burning for all people for all time. I think that's beautiful. And as I lit my Advent wreath yesterday and followed the program for that, I, I lighted the candle of faith. Some people call it hope, faith and hope. Hope is like pre-faith. Um, hope is hoping that good will come. It's an inner longing and desire for good, whereas faith is a knowing, a knowing that good is coming and that God is in charge the Jewish people were down to this one little group called the Maccabees that were willing to stand for what they wanted, although so many had turned away. But a little group can do a lot. You'll find in the scriptures that's also called the remnant. A remnant is like a little piece, a little piece. Like if you went to the, um, if you went to the fabric store and you'd see there's fabric on bolts and then there's little pieces and uh, the little pieces are um, called remnants of it. So even that little remnant, that little bit, work together for good. So even if you feel overwhelmed, uh, whatever you feel, keep the faith. Keep knowing that there is a higher power. The higher power is at work. That doesn't mean you sit back on your heels and don't do anything, though, because you do what you believe is right. So as we go through uh, our Advent Sundays and we go through the uh, eight nights of Hanukkah. Oh, and by the way, I was uh, very late last night getting going 
So um, during Hanukkah, one of the things they do is they eat special foods. And the foods that they eat are very often fried because they are celebrating the oil, the oil that lasted and lasted. So of those fried things, there are latkes, also known as potato pancakes. So tonight, I am going to make myself potato pancakes for supper. And I'm going to use the grater that I got at the uh, Vermont Country Store, the one just like my grandma used to use. So I am pretty excited about supper tonight. So now we know why uh, we are celebrating um, New Year, whether it's in the tradition of the Festival of Light, celebrating the miracles and that miracles happen, the return of light, the knowing that, you know, light is, is the light is truth, it is illumination, and that the light will come back. And we are celebrating that spiritually and physically. Whew. And you know what? I went off on such a long toot about that already. I did not talk about the National Day Calendar. Because today is Electronic Greetings Day, okay? I can't tell you how happy I am for Electronic Greetings Day. I have a Blue Mountain membership, and you can get cards and send them. You can either post them on Facebook, or I don't know if you can text them or not, but I sure hope you can, because to some of my children, email is already passe. So it's texting or Instagram or whatever. So I hope I find a way to update that. But if you do an email, you can even attach a gift card so they can scan the little thing and they can, so you can even send a gift that way. I am all for that. You know, uh, I love me, but my handwriting is not the best. And so those electronic gift cards, they can be read every time. No envelope, no stamp, send it out and smile. So I celebrate uh, Electronic Greetings Day. And also um, today is Cyber Monday. I did not do any Cyber Monday shopping. In my minimalizing, I've minimalized the number of gifts I get, which minimalizes or give, and it minimalizes the number of uh, things I have to look at on the internet. So I got a few ideas. I'm going to move with those, and um, and I, that made me very happy. So Cyber Monday, you still got a few hours to find those deals. Just remember, that, see, here's the thing: it's Cyber Monday. You got to do it now. You got to do it before it ends. Well, it's again, it was like Black Friday. Got to do it now. Got to do it before he ends. May lose out. Let me tell you something, my friends. This is just the beginning. We're going to have these kind of last chance sales all the way through Christmas and then the after Christmas sales. And and it's all, you will notice that there's a, an abundance of stuff, no matter how many times they might say, you know, um, supply channel problems and all this is. And that, there's more stuff out there than we need to get. And uh, we really, it's time for us to tar start to shift and to shift from buying more and more and overindulging ourselves and buying less and buying better, buying longer lasting. And that's my Christmas shopping plug. Okay. You know, this is a time when we want to be happy because it's the holidays. So of course we want to be have a happy holiday. We greet people every day and say, have a happy holiday. Some people are not going to have the best happy holiday because there will be people missing at their table. Because of the huge number of people we lost through COVID in the past year and then the year before. So last Christmas was also depleted in that I am happy to see the numbers of uh, f of um, fatalities seem to be going down there in that area. Um, but we want to 
have the best, happiest holiday we can. Remember, we talked about adrenaline and endorphins. We want to encourage endorphins and calm down and minimize the adrenaline so that we're happy, so that we're healthy, and so that we think well and make good choices. That's really important. So, and again, you might be thinking, how can I be happy with everything that's going on? You know what? We want to know that happiness is ours right this minute. And if you really take some time to think, you're going to think about five or six things that made you happy. You can see that I'm still working on my Christmas decorating, and I'm so glad you can only see this much because all around me is stuff. I tried to get the Christmas tree decorated. I've been moving like a slug in molasses. It's really ridiculous. But I have been uh, making progress and getting things hung up. And I do take my time. I don't force myself because when I'm, when I'm putting the things up, I'm having great memories of the way that things have been. We don't get hooked up in the past. We don't get stuck to it, but we savor it, we enjoy it, and we move forward to what we're what is ahead of us. It's it's all a part. It's like a past, present, future. It's like a holy holiday trinity. Past, present, future. Past, present, future. We've got traditions, and then we've got plans and new ideas and new ways of doing things. And the, the changes don't come quickly, but they come. So we will say so often, I'll be happy when I can slow down. I'll be happy when I get married. I'll be happy when I get out of this marriage. I'll be happy when I have children. I'll be happy when those kids are grown. I'll be happy when I retire. I'll be happy when I find something to do with my life that has meaning. See, the, the core, <laughs> that one factor that is there at all times is you. In your life, me. In my life. So our happiness is up to us. And I really invite you to look at it. Happiness is a journey, not a destination. The more things we look at every day to appreciate, that's why in my prayer time every morning, five things I'm grateful for and why. That is one of the best spiritual practices I have ever done. Uh, when I we did the first uh, Are You Happy video a little while ago, I told you I was going to do this little uh, this little quiz, and I've got just about enough time to do it. Now I will uh, tell you I'm going to just go through, going to move through it. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, if you have a paper and pencil, I want you to write this down. If not, listen to what I'm saying and ponder it. And then when I'm done, you can re you know you can rewatch the video up to the start of the test. And then you can answer all the questions. And if you have a paper and pencil, you want to write down number 1 to number 30, okay? And then next to it, you're either going to put a T or an F. Now, this happiness uh, scale quiz, it's a happiness rating skill, rating scale quiz, and it comes from happy dash relationships dot com so you can find that and many more wonderful things there but let's go over this really quickly you're going to answer true or false to each question and when you're finished add the total number of true responses and compare your total to the scoring chart and we're off number one I am basically happy with who I am. Number two, I have plenty of good relationships. Number three, I'm happy with my educational level. 
Now you notice I'm saying happy. I'm not saying done with, satisfied with, I've achieved it. Whatever level you're at, if you can be happy there, it doesn't mean you cannot strive for higher. When, you know, when we go over this tomorrow, we'll go over it and take our time. So if there's like, I'm not sure about that answer, we'll go over that tomorrow. Um, I am friendly and outgoing. True or false? I am mostly positive about the present and optimistic about the future. Number six. I seek new experiences. Number seven. I live in a country where my individual rights are protected and I have ample access to services. Number eight. I feel I'm always learning and growing. Number nine. Ooh, this is a challenging one. I listen as much as I talk. I gotta think about that one. Number ten. I have good health or take care of my health needs the best I can. Number eleven. I am making progress toward my dreams. Number 12, I enjoy being alone at times. Number 13, I feel connected to something greater than myself. <clears throat> Excuse me, my higher power, cosmic universe, nature, God, etc. Number 14, I enjoy good relationships with family members. It didn't say all of them, okay? I mean, you know, it depends. You have a couple people, there's always that one person that tap dances on your last nerve. But, um, is it generally, if you don't get along with anyone in your family, there's a little problem there. Number 15. I am happily married or in a happy romantic relationship. I want you to know I take issue with that because I have a lot of friendships, relationships, not married, not looking, because I am content right where I am. Content's not a choice though, so I guess I better pick happy. Hmm, that is a hard one for me, isn't it? Number 16. I always try to learn from and correct my mistakes. Number 17, I feel a deep sense of gratitude for my blessings. Number 18, ooh, here's a toughie. I apologize when I should and offer forgiveness when needed. Number 19, I don't tend to hold grudges. Number 20, I believe giving is more precious than receiving. Number 21, in general, I see the world as a good enough place. Number 22, although I'm not perfect, I respect myself. Number 23, when others around me are pessimistic, I find a way to be positive and optimistic. Number 24, I try to find the good in others, and I realize everyone has faults. 
Number 25. I am good at finding the silver lining in any cloud. That is something worthy of wanting. Number 26. I love to let go and have fun. Number 27. I am aware of the many good deeds others do for me and say thank you often. Number 28. I often go out of my way to make other people feel good. You know what about that one? When you make other people feel good, you automatically feel good. Everybody feels good. Number 29. I take care of myself. I manage stress and get plenty of rest and relaxation without feeling guilty about it. Number 30. I do not blame others for my disappointments or failures. Wow, that was pretty good, huh? Now, if you were making notes as we went along, if you count the items that are true, I'll give you a minute to do that. Okay, 26 to 30 items are true. You are happy and fulfilled. 22 to 25 items true. You are basically happy. 18 to 21 items true. You are sometimes happy. Less than 18 items true. Genuine happiness may be eluding you. Ooh, that's kind of, ah. Uh. But, you know, we can always get better, right? I mean, you know. Um, so it, it gives you some tips and suggestions. And again, this is from happy-relationships.com. Go to their page and you'll find all kinds of good stuff. Um, it says, make a note of the items you answered false and think about ways to improve each area. Prioritize areas in need of improvement and begin making changes in a few. Don't try to do it all at once. A few at a time. Bit by bit, incremental change. You just did not wake up one morning and climb out of your crib and start walking. It took a while to trial and trial and failure and, you know, so uh, just know that there isn't a rush to do everything. It only stresses yourself out. Okay, yes, it says some people find it's easier to work on one and only one item at a time. Then it says improve your relationships with others and yourself. You'll, it, your, ha your satisfaction will always result in greater happiness if you have good relationships and you work on them. Good relationships don't happen. They, every once in a while there's like this miraculous, you know, oh my God, we finished each other's sentences stuff. And I've got some friends that I'm pretty close to that like, but not completely. And I have some friends that I got to visit and then step back a while and spend time with and then step back a while and... And I'm sure that they feel the same way. Okay. Take an outgoing and optimistic approach to life helps. So try to be positive. Look for that silver lining. Uh, think about it. Know that God is in charge. Give it to God and look for the good. Leading a balanced life, going after your dreams, and finding meaning and purpose in your work are helpful. A happier life is right a wrong around the corner so are you happy can you be happy how do i know you can be happy 
because you are in control. No matter what we might think, in happiness, we're in control. In unity, we've got a song called, We Make Our Own World. We make our own world wherever we are. Our happiness, then, is our own making. We make our world, our world with our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Play it again if you need to go over that list again. And uh, I will talk to you again tomorrow. God bless.